Hey, what's up everyone? Just wanted to do a quick update. I'm uh, doing some maintenance today and uh, going to be doing a water change shortly. I wanted to see if I could zoom in on this. It kind of looks like uh, it might be separating into two heads. You can start to see the two mouths. I need to do some more research to find out, but it looks like the beginning of, uh, of it separating. Uh, it's kind of hard to see this way, so maybe that's not the best view. But right in the middle, you can kind of see, if I can get it to focus well enough, a little piece of flesh in between the two mouths. So hopefully this is starting to spread uh, or separate into, uh, into two heads. I've already got some little sprout ups down at the bottom, you can see there. But uh, I fed it today and uh, just noticed that there was some, looks like some flesh in between between a mouth and so maybe maybe this is the beginning I haven't had this coral very long so it'd be awesome if uh, it's already starting to split the hammer in the back's doing doing pretty good never really opens up fully but uh, sure does have a good appetite likes to eat but uh, this video really isn't about isn't about the top I really wanted to do a quick update on my on some of my maintenance this is something that I've designed. It's a little bit bass backwards. I'd prefer it being uh, in the opposite way, which I'll explain. Uh, basically, got a little pump that uh, sucks up all the ditrous and stuff that I stir up, and then uh, pumps it into this little, uh, it's actually a pet food container that I drilled a hole in the, in the bottom of it and basically just fill it with filter floss. You can already see, just from the time it's been in here, that uh, it's getting pretty brown, basically what I do is just take a, uh, a plastic credit card of some, some type. Uh, it's just an, an old card that I had for, uh, for beach access. So uh, this is what I use to scrape all the glass. Uh, as some people may have seen from some of my videos, my tank is pretty scratched. It's an, it's an old tank and so it has a lot of scratches and I try to minimize the amount of scratches and this, these plastic cards don't scratch your glass and they do a really good job of uh, cleaning off all the ditrous. So basically just scrubbing down everything, trying to get all the dishes. The water still pretty cloudy. It was pretty dirty in here. Scraped everything off and then I use a turkey baster to uh, blow it all around, stir it all up. And then I just let this sit for, you know, really as long, long as I feel like doing it. Not too long since today is a water change, but uh, I mainly put it in there to get all the big particles out, the big pieces of algae. And uh, this is a pretty good way to remove uh, you know bad nutrients basically I, I run I run bare bottom as you can see I used to run sand for the longest time and as I became lazy it holds a lot of ditrous and uh, a lot of bad nutrients that, that you don't want in, in the water so uh, I decided to go bare bottom and now about once a month or so maybe maybe a little bit more I uh, turn off all the pumps scrape it down and then put this little vacuum thing going in I would prefer that uh, the water gets sucked up into this container as opposed to being sucked up into the pump <clears throat> because if it sucks up a small piece of rock or anything you know it could definitely break the propeller um, and uh, you know not function anymore so it, it's been working okay I try to keep a close eye on it make sure I'm not you know blowing anything into it that could possibly damage it I don't get too much sand down here uh, my, my overflow system that I've built uh, works pretty well at keeping most of the particles in the tank, which is actually why I designed, or not I didn't design it, but, but built this design, just because I had a very basic overflow. Kind of hard to see because of my dirty tank, but uh, it would it would you know keep a lot of the the top water skimmed really well, but uh, it it also sucked up a lot of the stuff into my sump. This does a much better job at keeping my sump clean and, uh, and the tank water separate. It's also a lot quieter too. The basic overflow that I had was really noisy, lots of gurgling. So I just wanted to do a quick shot of this. Uh, I saw this on a video and kind of just made it my own based on just materials I had in the garage. So that's, that's why I say it's kind of bass backwards. Uh, I, I kind of wish I could design it differently, but I think I would need a more powerful pump. This works for me. It's only a 10 gallon sump, so it's really not too bad. So I run a bare bottom sump. And this is because I used to have substrate and it just really got very dirty all the time. 
it became a, a real struggle to keep it clean, and so I decided to go uh, bare bottom instead of having any kind of sand or substrate in there. And so far, I really like it because, uh, based on what I've seen from algae scrubbers, and I could be completely wrong on this, but this is just kind of my theory on it. So, an algae scrubber is a specific spot designated to grow algae to keep it from multiplying in your tank. You uh, set up the environment so that way this algae can reproduce much faster than it would in the display tank, therefore uh, absorbing all of the, uh, the bad nutrients in the water. And then you remove the algae, which is your nutrient export. So uh, my thought is with a the way I, the way at least I'm doing it with a bare bottom tank. In a couple weeks, this thing will get covered in algae, uh, and then I use this mechanism that that I've created. I watched a video and saw what he had and thought, you know, I, I had a couple things in there that could in my garage that might work. So right now the pump is in is in this side. Uh, I'd, I'd switch it between the different compartments and blow everything out and scrape it out and then it gets uh, pushed and sucked up into into this thing which is just like I said a pet uh, food container that I cut a hole in the, the bottom of it and then uh, shoved a bunch of filter floss which all I use is stuff you get from Walmart super cheap some people uh, have some issues with it they've said it might contain other chemicals that it's not accounted for on the package, but I haven't had any issue with it, and it's lasted a very long time for just a couple bucks. So that's pretty much what I use uh, to catch all of the, the big particles, and then I'll do a water change just because I've been stirring it up so much. So back to my main point. After it grows the algae, and then I remove it, uh, to me, this is seeming like just a giant algae scrubber. I mean, I've got uh, a pretty strong LED light, it's like 38 watts for this little bit of area, so it, it grows some algae. It grows a lot of algae in my little refugium here, uh, and I scrape it off, and then I suck it up with a pump, it gets caught up in uh, the filter floss, I remove that, throw it away, and then do a water change where I basically use the same pump and just pump the water out of this sump into a 5 gallon bucket, put fresh water in, uh, and there's my nutrient export. And then when the Xenia get big enough and start taking over, I'll be able to cut them off take those out and more nutrient export. So just my two cents on uh, my little refugium instead of doing the macroalgae, uh, I'm trying this method and so far it's worked really well for me. I don't have to worry about all of the sand and constantly stirring it up. I mean I am constantly scraping algae off but at least I can see the algae I'm removing and not removing any sand and not have to deal with all of that. So uh, just my two cents, just my thought, my theory, maybe it works for somebody else but it seems to work pretty well for me. Uh, but uh, in an hour or so, it will probably be very clean. Uh, I'm going to probably do a 5% or 10% water change into this 5 gallon bucket here in a second. I'm also going to clean out my DIY skimmer. I've got it turned off at the moment just because I was blowing everything around. And I've got it elevated since the water also elevated. It's got quite a bit of skim in there. I need to dump it out and clean it. Again, it's not the most efficient, but uh, it, it does it does pretty good for such a small bottom, small volume of water. This is only a 30 gallon cube and only a 10 gallon tank, so with all the rock in there, I, I probably am right about 30 30 gallons. So you don't need. Some people even argue that you don't even need a protein skimmer. Uh, this tank has been running for probably about five years, uh, and maybe with just in the last year, I've really started to amp my maintenance and started to do things right. So it's seen many years of neglect, uh, which is why it's been a fish only for so long. I just knew I didn't have the discipline to, to do corals. But uh, regardless, it's, it's seen a lot of neglect. Uh, I do have, I stirred up the sand bed this morning in preparation for this, and uh, Sure enough, you can kind of see them right there. There's a sand dollar right where. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. Oh, oh, too much. Right there. I've got about ten of these guys in my tank. If I can get the zoom to, if I can get the focus right. Anyway, so I've got about ten of these guys in the tank. I see them every once in a while, a bunch of different sizes. I live on the coast, so. Uh, based on our state law, I picked up the maximum amount I could at one time and uh, put them in there. It's a, it's a relatively deep sand bed. However, as you can see, it's not very uh, sandy. It is on the bottom, but just over the years, you know, all the, the dead snails and 
shells and stuff, you know, just kind of accumulate on top. So uh, whenever I stir it up or, or uh, do any kind of maintenance to it, it kind of gets some of that, that nice sand on top. But they do a really good job, the sand dollars do a really good job of cleaning the sand. So I really don't stir it that much. I really don't ever, hardly ever have algae on my sand of any kind. Could also be just the amount of time that this tank has been running. It's very efficient. I have a lot of rock for a small amount of uh, fish that are in there. Let me zoom back out. It's really jittery. Go the wrong way. But uh, so yeah, so I very, I very rarely st uh, stir it. I do every once in a while just to, just for maintenance purposes, just because I, I feel weird about not stirring it. I'm worried about too much accumulation of, of dead material. But the sand dollars, sand dollars work really well. I've got a couple big ones in here. Uh, one of them usually like to hang out in here. I can usually tell because there's a little mound of white sand right above where they are. They do a really good job of, uh, of cleaning, cleaning the sand and making sure it stays nice and healthy. So I'm going to let this run for a little while longer, do a water change, and uh, that'll be the end of that. N another water change in about a week. So thanks everyone for watching. I'll be posting another video soon, either on this tank or the 8 gallon nano. Everything's doing, been doing pretty, pretty good. The new fish is still adjusting, the blenny. Uh, he's still not eating food in the water column. I fed the live baby brine shrimp. He seemed to show a little bit of interest in that, but uh, my pod population has been sustaining him for now. So we'll, we'll see. So far, he's fat and happy. <clears throat> Maybe once he gets hungry enough. He'll, he'll start eating some of the food that I've been throwing in. Baby clownfish, but a new addition to the clownfish. You can see him right there. He's fitting great. They get along great. He's eating food in the water column. No issues, no problem. No one has ick, even though I did not quarantine these fish. Uh, I, I guess I just didn't stress them out enough for it to really show. Some people think that all fish have ick, but uh, I did not see it pop its head up. It's still pretty early. I guess it could show itself in a couple weeks, but I really don't plan on adding any fish for at least another month just to try to keep the stress level down. I wanted to show y'all how effective uh, my little ditrous vacuum is. Looks like it's raining a little bit. I think it's about to storm. There's some of my old filter floss from this morning. So this is just what I put in uh, after this morning. I changed it out. That one wasn't too dirty, but I uh, stirred up the sand this morning, decided to change that out. So this one is the nasty one. After scraping up the sump, if I can get it out, I really don't want to put my hands in it. After I scraped out the sump, come on. Ah, there we go. So after I scraped out the sump, everything gets really dirty. As you can see, that's pretty nasty. So, now the only downfall to that, that design is that it does get sucked up through the pump as opposed to sucked through that bottle. Uh, but I would need a more powerful pump in order to suck the water through. So it's working working pretty well right now. I just want to give you guys a quick shot. Let me know what you think. Other than that, everything's going really well. Thanks everyone for watching. Like and subscribe. And uh, see you guys next time.